Did you know that there are brushes in Blender that can simulate clothing, which you can use very, very well to create outfits for your characters? That is exactly what I want to show you in this video. Last video, the last video before this, I showed you where you can find them and how you can use them generally. In this video, I want to give you a more detailed look at how I use them, for example, for Siri, for her outfit, for my recent character. Um, I wanted to, with this character especially, kind of test how they work, how my general workflow in the future will be with it, and, you know, the easiest way to work with them, kind of figure out the most biggest kings so I can, you know, report back to you so you don't have to go through the, uh, through, you don't have to discover those problems for yourself. Um, so the way that I wanted to start for this is I wanted to create like a, you know, easily uh, modeled shirt, basically. She has a shirt on, so that lends it, itself quite well. That's why I actually chose her um, so that it's not too difficult right from the beginning. The, as I said in the previous video as well, the clothing or the cloth filters are very, very useful, especially for clothing that isn't very, I guess, detailed or where the folds aren't super, super fine. The problem with the brushes or the one downside that you, that I can currently see or that I have kind of encountered is that the simulations work very well on very big and very, very, you know, yeah, basically very big. Um, geometry, but it gets harder when you have more and more geometry. As it, it's basically like uh, the more geometry it has, the heavier the vertices become, or the heavier the clothing becomes, which also affects the, I guess, folds that are being created or that are being simulated. As you can see here now, I um, basically tried to figure out how I want to begin with the uh, clothing, you know, with the simulation. I think that is the, you know, one of the big things that you need to figure out right from the beginning when you want to create your characters. It's very important right from the beginning to kind of figure out the main folds that you definitely want to have in your character. And you want to start with those and kind of thinking about how you can create them with the tools that you have. Um, to recap from the previous video, if you haven't seen it, we have the post brush, which can have cloth simulations. We have the boundary brush and we have the cloth filter brush. These three you can use very well, and I have used here for Siri, for example, to create her outfit. I think you have, I think these brushes are enough to really create all outfits that you really need. But it's um basically you kind of have to figure out how you want to use them or how you can use them to create the desired, I guess, folds. So for example, for this, um, for the top, for the middle part, because she's wearing a corset, she has like the shirt is basically like tightened and then pulled up. So what you, what I kind of had to figure out which brushes I should use to create, for example, this pull, this tightened and pulled up effect. I, you know, decided to use the face sets, which you can use not only in the cloth filter brush, but also in the post brush and kind of manipulate the way the bo both brushes work to create the, you know, this pulled up effect or this tightened effect. I used uh, the, as you can see it here, is basically the same workflow that I use here on the arm. For example, here for the uh, post brush, you can see you can define how long the axis for the post brush, post brush is supposed to be. And then you can, for example, use the squash and stretch, stretch function to squash or pull up the the um, the arm, basically, or the uh, sleeve, which I then, um, which, you know, she has done. And then I wanted to separate the, I guess, shoulder as well so that I can kind of fix it shoulder so that not like the whole shoulder is being pulled together. Then afterwards, of course, she has some straps on her arms and that is where you can see the same workflow that I basically used for the uh, for the corset. I kind of mark the faces that I want to pull together. Then of course I pull them together. I smooth them a little bit, little bit so that I can put the leather strap that is actually on there, you know, on there so without the cloth kind of poking through. And then I went up to the tub because she has like these folds on her shoulders that you can basically always see on every clothing. Um, always very important on every clothing you have like these folds that go sort of into the middle into to like your neck or sort of high up to your shoulder um, those I wanted to create there as well then I actually separated the uh, sleeve into two parts because I wanted to pull up the the sleeve and I found it was just easier to separate the um, the sleeve into two parts and then pull them up manually or individually rather than doing them together. That just worked for me a little bit better and I think it's a little bit easier to maybe even sometimes separate the clothing into more pieces than what it would look like if it's if it would have been tailored basically. Usually for you know tailored or if you you know sew a shirt you would have a piece a pattern of fabric for uh, you know one for the sleeves and then you know maybe one or two for the middle part here for the top um, but here you know you can also separate it into more than just two because then you can um, 
make it easier on yourself and you can utilize the extra borders that you create or the extra edges with for example the border brush it, you can't you can't really use the border brush or the what is it called again the um i think it's the border brush uh, this one that i just used <laughs> to um you can you can only use it on edges and you creating more edges gives you the ability to use the functionalities like for example grabbing the cloth and then pulling it up, pulling it down, pulling it in different directions. You can't really do that with the boundary brush without creating another edge. Um, and by separating that, you can do that. Here, for example, then I pulled it up again. I think I even used the boundary brush there. And then of course I need to pull it up again. So I used the boundary brush again, stretched it up, pulled it up even more so that it, you know, um, looks quite well for the arm. One thing that I still kind of need to figure out is how you can make the folds. As you can see on her sleeve, they're very, very, um, I guess, symmetrical or very, very, uh, they don't look that great yet. I still kind of want to figure out how I can make them look more natural because the folds are all like symmetrical almost. I kind of still want to figure out how I can do that better. And then uh, the strap in the, sh in the middle that kind of, um, you know, tightens her chest, I guess. Um, it's pretty simple. You just use another face head. You have to make sure that the pivot point of the you know the face set or i wanted to use the cloth filter brush there and the cloth filter brush always creates or uses for example for scale if you use the scale operation it scales the faces to the pivot point and if the pivot point is somewhere in you know i don't know timbuktu it's not going to work that well because it's get all going to be pulled over there rather than being pulled together where it's supposed to be so if you, for example, use the scale function, you have to make sure that the pivot point is where it's supposed to be scaled to or away, scaled away from. Of course, then the color is pretty simple. I just add a little bit of geometry and, you know, use, I think, even the pose or boundary brush to just kind of flop it over a little bit. And then I add the um, strap that is supposed to be there afterwards. So you kind of have to, with cloth, always kind of imagine how the, you have to imagine the clothing without folds and then you have to imagine the clothing with folds and you kind of have to reverse engineer how these folds are being created and then you at least that's what i've tried i've tried to imitate the movement to recreate those folds i think that is one of the big workflows that i think work quite well for clothing to kind of understand how these folds are being created usually you know t-shirts or shirts the arms or you know the arms in a, in a, in a neutral pose are in like an a pose and then if you lower your arms, these folds, for example, here on the um, the armpit are being created. Kind of imagining how the neutral pose gets to the folded pose, I guess, can help you understand why the folds are there. Kind of stretch, squash and stretch is like a principle that I always remember. And um, you can use that, for example, to create or to, to understand how you can recreate those folds in your characters or in your clothing. Then, of course, I add these small little um, details like this, this, this little um, you know, band to hold the strap together. Um, pretty simple. Just use the curve with like a, you know, bevel, not a bevel, but like a, like a curve, whatever, thickening <laughs> to actually make it a mesh. And then I kind of used the editing, go, went into edit mode and also just basic scope mode, used the grab brush and all that to kind of move the folds around. The sleeve was quite big. So I kind of made it a little bit slimmer. And here you can see I added the um, the leather strap. The le leather strap, of course, um, that's why I smooth the geometry or the cloth behind, underneath it, because I need to make sure that the strap isn't being like penetrated by it. And then, of course, um, you can I kind of try to move the cloth around the strap. So I kind of keep it in like a semi relaxed pose, the cloth brush after I added the folds. And then once I add the actual strap, then I can move the, then I can basically fine tune the interaction between the strap and the um, the cloth. The strap is pretty simple. I just used a cylinder, added a solidify modifier, also a bevel modifier to um, to make the edges sharper if you smooth it smooth. Um, and then I usually use two bevel steps and then um, you have these two straps and that's pretty quick. I think how easily you can create this sort of tightening effect for the sleeve. One big, of course, benefit is having an actual reference of what her outfit looks like. I used the actual reference of, you know, the game um, to kind of see what the folds would kind of, I guess, simu simulated more realistically would, what they would look like. That was a big help in seeing if the simulations of the cloth brush, because they're kind of semi um, realistic simulations, whether they look right or whether they look, you know, weird and I need to fix them afterwards. 
fixing I fixed them afterwards once I had basically fully blocked out the folds and added the um, sort of peripherals like these leather pieces that are kind of hard. Um, I kind of fixed some folds afterwards um, because I kind of want to see, you know, what it would look like with like the basic pieces in place. Then, of course, you know, added some detail work for the for the corset. The way I like to do that is I like to create the biggest shape first and then I with like a clean topology and then I like to separate the, you know, the um, the big piece into smaller pieces, basically separating it. As you can see, they're adding some more edges, which makes the subdivided mesh a little sh sharper, but I didn't really, um, I kind of fixed that afterwards. So then I just grab faces and I separate them by pressing, selecting them and pressing P so that I can separate them into a new mesh. And then you have these nicely um, separated pieces that you can then also, uh, that I then afterwards actually merge together again, because I didn't like how they're all individual, like, you know, sausages, <laughs> like individual lines. I wanted to make them bigger pieces, which I think works better here. And also, you know, it's the case for her. She actually wore a similar looking piece. Um, you know, I just combined them again, merged the vertices, and then we have, you know, what we can see there. Also, I need to sharpen, you need to always, of course, sharpen the edges so that the subdivision doesn't smooth the edges. And then I need to kind of reposition the vertices a little bit because um, if everything is kind of, you know, merged together, it, the subdiv subdivisions work a little different than if you separate them into individual pieces. And, and I didn't want to kind of let them slip out of the silhouette or body of the, or out of the frame, basically. So I kind of push them back into it, which um, is a little tedious, but, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> as long as it good, looks good in the end, all time spent is uh, is well spent. I kind of decided to add a little bit of details. The buttons at the bottom I actually removed at the end because we're not going to see them. For the straps, I of course wanted to make them look like they're tightening the cloth, so they have to sit on top of the cloth. I add some thickness there, add some subdivision so that the shrink wrap that I also added works a little better. Then I added some thickness to the clothing because, you know, clothing isn't just like a infinitely thin piece of, uh, you know, mesh. <laughs> it actually has thickness and that really helps with the realism. Afterwards, of course, because I separate the basic t-shirt into individual parts to have more edges that I can work with. And then, then of course, need to make sure that these seams don't have, have <clears throat> that these seams don't have any gaps. And um, you can see that in the in the back, the seams have kind of slightly gaps and maybe even in the arms, but it's really, really hard to see from most angles if you, you know, fix it um, appropriate or if you fix it enough. Of course, then I add materials, pretty simple stuff. I or have like a material library that I usually grab stuff from. Some of them is made by myself procedurally. Some of it, most of it I grab from Polyhaven and then I just plug that all in. And um, I still haven't figured out how to use normal maps properly. Um, so I just, usually what I do is I use a converter, um, what is it, color ramp node to cr turn it into a bump map and then plug that into the bump node, which usually works quite well. Maybe not the best way to do it, but at least I can work with bump maps. I'm comfortable with them. So that's why I use them, okay? If you know how to use normal maps the right way, for some reason it always looks weird, um, then um, tell me, okay? I also have a, uh, a texture pack of fabric that I use here. I want to make sure with every fabric or with every piece of clothing that I do, I want to make sure that the clothing is actually, or the threads actually follow a, make sense when it comes to the um, direction. Usually, you know, if you cut patterns, um, the fabric or the, the, the patterns, what is it? The, um, the threads um, follow a certain direction. And I kind of want to make sure that they're not like diag diagonally going in any direction. I usually want to make them like horizontal or sort of going up. And for this, I think I went with a horizontal. I just kind of, you know, affect the um, or change the UVs so that they um, make, I guess, more sense in the end, so that the textures make more sense. Then, of course, I also need to make sure that it looks good in rendered mode. And then I actually go into detailing because then, you know, we are, are almost in the final stages. Detailing is basically just to, um, you know, once you add more subdivisions, the folds get a little blurry. So I need to um, just kind of sharpen some edges. Of course, not all edge, edges are sharp, but it still um, makes a huge difference to add more contrast to 
and sharpen some edges to, you know, basically create the contrast. However, having all edges being very smooth looks kind of weird. Having some sharp edges added into some smooth edges, I guess you could call it, or smooth folds makes the whole thing just look way more realistic. I think I could have even done even more, um, sharpened some more with maybe one more subdivision level, but I didn't want to spend like ages on just folds. So I opted out and um, kept it at that. These folds, especially, I think I could have, um, you know, just kind of um, sharpened a little bit more, but you know, um, I didn't want to do that. Okay. Usually I always, I, I try to force myself not to work too much on the small details that nobody will, will notice. That's why I also haven't um, kind of detailed the straps on her arms too much. They, they're supposed to look like a buckle, um, no, like a belt buckle. They're supposed to have like a belt sort of look. But I just opted to making them like a closed band, which doesn't really make sense. But it, it is my version. Okay, you can't tell me how I how I need to do my characters. Okay, <laughs> but um, yeah, just kind of sharpening and um, refining some edges as well. As you can see here, these folds on her arm, on her arm or on her armpit, basically, they go to the sleeve. I mean, to the sleeve. Yeah, sleeve. But of course, the folds that they actually don't go to the sleeve. They go like over or around the sleeves and um, that's why what i for example fixed the cloth simulations i maybe could have created those with cloth simulations but um for this character i didn't so i needed to figure that out I needed to fix that doesn't really take that long i usually use the crease brush for these detailing steps um you know just kind of creating some extra depth and creating some extra bumps so that it looks a little bit more um refined i guess you could call it same here for the uh, for the collar and I also added some thickness there and then I refined for example the sleeve the other one you can see here everything looks a little smoother than I wanted it to look so I just grabbed the uh, the crease brush again and also the smooth brush to kind of remove some of the artifacts that are being created by these brushes um what I said in the previous video as well is that these brushes um, tend to create some weird artifacts, some mini folds, basically, if you have more geometry. That's why I recommend using these brushes for the very broad geometry. Otherwise, it can get very kind of weird. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It looks like glitchy or kind of um, too bumpy where there shouldn't be mini folds. Um, so having very broad geometry keeps the folds from being too small. Having too much geometry creates these very weird geometric looking folds. Yeah, and you can avoid that by having very little geometry. Um, of course, then afterwards, once you have the main folds, you can then add some more finer folds or refine these big folds um, with more subdivisions with the multi-resolution modifier. As, as I do there, you can see the folds that I mean right there that kind of go over and around the um, the um, the sleeve Be being created because, you know, you have your uh, the neutral pose for this piece of garment would be like an A pose. But because you lower your arm, you crunch or you squash the armpit cloth, I guess you could say, um, closer together, which creates these folds basically around the arm. Which, um, yeah, you know, defining or refining whatever sculpt you do is always annoying. So I, <laughs> I try to try to minimize that time that I spend on that as much as possible. I always have to keep myself from uh, being too detailed because you can always be more detailed. But um, for this one especially, I kind of wanted, just kind of wanted to test out the um, the cloth brushes, which I think work very very well for um, blocking out even or just creating a quick cloth or garment for a character. I think they work very well. If you have references, you can probably see that the folds might not 100% look that way. But I think if, if you, um, but I think, um, you know, you don't necessarily see that they're wrong. Um, it, it can, it, it could just be better. Um, so these brushes are very, very useful, especially if you just kind of want to create a quick, um, I guess, garment for your character, or you just kind of want to, um, I guess, you don't exactly know how to create cloth and you can kind of use them as a guide to kind of understand how folds are being created, in which direction they go, why they go in that direction. And then one more big tip, if you create clothing, I always say that in my personal feedback sessions, which is actually going to come out this week as well, personal feedback, a stream where I, re where I review and give feedback to all the pieces that have been submitted in my discord. The link will be in the description. If you want to submit a piece, join the discord and post your stuff in the uh, in the personal feedback channel 
Um, what I always say in those sessions, if people create characters with clothing, is oftentimes, probably 90% of the time, well, let's say a little bit, little less, okay, a little more, a little less, um, people forget to add seam lines, and seam lines are a huge changer when it comes to clothing. All pieces of clothing, well, most, almost all of them, have reinforced edges. What that means is that um, we have a fabric and if you just cut off a fabric you have all these threads going coming you have, oh, you have all these threads coming out of the cut of fabric so it kind of fr frizzes out or kind of gets destroyed the more you work with it the way you can fix that is by reinforcing the edge which means you grab the f uh you grab the uh the fabric and then you fold it around and you sew both sides together this way the edge that is actually at the actual edge is not just open threads but the threads being bent around so that the edge is basically reinforced. That is the seam line that you can most of the time see on the edges of garment. And that is what I add here, for example, for the strap and also for the shirt. It is very, very simple to add. You just create a custom bump map that you then can plug in with a mix RGB node into the rest of the bump map if you have a second one. And then you can add these, um, these custom bump maps or these custom um, seam lines very, very easily by just grabbing the... Um, the um, what is it the draw brush with like a black black color i actually use the sharp fall off for the brush to make it look a little bit um more like a seam and here i actually use the i don't remember what it's called there's like a um stroke length or whatever setting where you can create these gaps in between the stroke you can create these this threading which works actually quite well um and it's very very easy to do but then i realized <laughs> that um this stuff, you know, um, in the end, in the render, is so small and also kind of blurry because of depth of field that you can't really see it anyway. So I just did it there and for no other leather strap piece, I kind of realized, well, I, if I do that there, I kind of have to do that for all the leather pieces, including the individual parts of the corset. I didn't want to do that, so I just did it there. <laughs> and then one more big secret tip if you're still watching, okay? Um, if you want to create very alive characters, one important thing to put in your characters is actually adding a light, a small little highlight in the eyes that gives it way more, makes the character world look way more alive and way more realistic. Or yeah, basically just way more alive and um, just makes it way more appealing. The way I did it there because I already had the, see, the, the lighting set and I didn't want to add more light into the scene. I just added these small um, spotlights into the eyes which reflect this, wide, this small white light you know, away and you can see these very small highlights in the eyes without actually having to affect the lighting that you have already set up. Oftentimes adding the light coming from the front uh, makes it too bright or it, it, that it was actually, that was the case for me here for this piece. I didn't want to do that so I just used these very distinct very specific spotlights in the eye so that I don't overexpose the image. I think it turned out pretty well for the time that I spent. Um, I think I spent roughly maybe three to four hours creating the clothing. If you have any more questions, of course, and I also probably want to do more of these explanation videos in the future for these characters. If there is any feedback, any questions or whatever, something to make this format better, then put those in the comments. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.